Welcome back in case you just joined us. This is Plots Politics and we are moving to the second issue of the day. In response to agitation for the breaking up of Nigeria, former military administrator of the defunct Bender State, Jeremiah Husseini, has declared that he is ready to fight to keep Nigeria together. He added that Nigeria's civil war experience was bad as brothers were now fighting brothers. But with calls for Biafra still being heard and now Odudua Republic, could we say that the end of a united Nigeria is a cause for concern? Joining us to discuss this is a public affairs analyst, Biodu Shoumi, which I understand will join us any moment soon. And of course, uh, Professor Chris Mwokobia will still here with us. So let me start with you in this second half, Professor. Um, I don't know whether you want to discard the, the, the messenger from the message, but let's put the two in context. Uh, do you think this is a very important call that he has made? Let me say clearly that for the messenger and the message, I, I hold profound respect for both of them. Uh, I think that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who believes that God created us and put us together in the entity called Nigeria. But the next phase is for us to do that which is needful. There is a role, a place for God in, in the affairs of man. He, he superintends over the affairs of man, but he's given to man the ability to fix his face. You don't wait for God to come and, uh, and do what we must do. And like I, I, I've always told Nigerians that the, even the Christian Bible says that the cord of two is strong, the cord of three who can break. I believe that this country is going to continue, but we must rethink, remodel, renegotiate, and restructure this enterprise so that, like uh, we had a, a somewhat prosperous First Republic, we can have a great country to be proud of. Let me say clearly, Coyote, that the reason you have the agitation for Biafra, the reason the Odua people are calling for an Odua Republic, is simply because the, the, the injustices that inundate the Nigerian enterprise is gangantuan. It is simply because the injustice litters every corner. It's simply because we have refused as a nation to address the fundamental issues. There are issues of nationhood. There are issues of equity. There are issues of unity. There are issues of, of, of social justice. There are issues of fairness. Until they are addressed, the Igbos and those who are agitating for Biafra will have a plausible call. The, those who are calling for Odua Republic will have a plausible call. But I do sincerely believe that when we decide to congregate at the table where we address our palace differences, where we address the issues that agitate and trouble us, then only can uh, the likes of... Uh, uh, Jeremiah Oseni, who should begin to ask Mr. President and those who matter in leadership to call for a conference where we will restructure uh, this enterprise, to call for a, norm a normative of restructuring uh, to become the anthem of our nation. Until they do that, uh, those who are saying that Nigeria is indivisible, Nigeria is non-negotiable, uh, are just dancing on, on a sharp knife. I, I, I was happy just a few days ago when I read the statement credited to the vice president of Nigeria, where he said that if we continue the way we're going, this country will break. And that is the truth. If we continue to deceive ourselves and, and sing, uh, oh, hell, the indivisible Nigeria, without discussing and renegotiating the terms of our coexistence, then we will be living a lie. I, I think that the time has come. And now is where those who truly care about this country will begin to congregate at that parlor where we all call for the remodeling, the rethinking, okay. the renegotiation, and the restructuring of the Nigerian enterprise. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, Biodun Shoumi back now. Uh, Biodun Shoumi, we read a statement that was credited to Jeremiah Husseini, who's saying that he's ready to fight for the unity of Nigeria. That is not for breakup, it's not for those calling for, maybe I should start from there. You know, when we hear this word of self-determination, as much as it is a right in the UN Charter, 
but sometimes the kind of rhetoric we hear seems a bit disturbing. So how do we ensure that we actually truly united? Yeah, in the first instance, we need to look at the mindset and the personal construct of um, Jeremiah Hussein. These are people who fought the civil war, who taught um, their stakeholders in maintaining the unity of the country. He didn't actually perceive the Nigerian people as being the one to decide the fate of the country. Uh, despite the contradiction within the Nigerian society, I mean, the growing inequality between the rich and poor, the growing inequality, you know, amongst the region, the zone in Nigeria, the fact that democracy has not been able to de deliver the dividends of democracy to the Nigerian people, the fact that corruption is on the increase, ethnic tension is on the rise. Um, so the like um, what John, John, uh, Jeremiah Austin is doing is from his mind con construct, dating from the civil war, is to say, look, we fought for this country then I'm going to have to defend it no matter what happens. Okay. But the reality on the ground today is different. He only needs to reflect back that we had empires in the past. You know, we had the Ottoman Turks Empire. It collapsed. The Prussian Empire collapsed. The British Empire collapsed. The Mali Empire collapsed. Or your empire that lasted for, 30, for 300 years also collapsed. There is no empire that goes on you know, had its finition. The fact of the matter is, is in line with the laws of social development that at a point you keep mutating in response to the needs of the people of the country. Today, very few people would doubt the fact that the ethnic line, the fourth line in the country is so fragile that it could snap at any point in time. Hmm. And what is the reason for this is actually because the military imposed a what they call federalism which is not true federalism they imposed a unitary okay. form of federalism on the country which is threshing you know the fragility of the country and therefore what would you expect from a military officer to say the likes of general Akin Yade and others I've seen the wisdom in the fact that we need to restructure the country to avoid the country from breaking up. Okay. We have passed the era of somebody saying uh, the unity of Nigeria cannot be, it's not be discussed or uh, be, be, be compromised. Even Britain, United Kingdom is facing enormous threats, not only from Wales, also from Scotland. Same issue in Ireland. So it's in line with this loss of social development. Okay. Whether Jeremiah, General Jeremiah Hosseini wants to recognize that reality or not is a different thing. But okay. he does not stop Mr. Show me. I will come back to you. I will come back to you. Let, let's continue this conversation with Professor Chris. Um, okay. Initially, you mentioned something about Ghana, and uh, some come up with this excuse, especially those people who are always defending anything Nigeria, even sometimes blindly. They will tell us that. Nigeria is more heterogeneous. We are dealing with more ethnic nationalities than that of Ghana. So I want to ask, is this heterogeneity a blessing or it's something that is actually too complex for us to handle? Let me say this, that those who argue on the lines of uh, the multiplicity of tribes and heterogeneity uh, like you have alluded, are uh, 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 smart by heart. And I say this advisedly. If you look at Ghana, Ghana has well over 20 tribes. In Nigeria, those who dominate us are not more than four tribes. Okay, so the, the argument is, uh, is, is, not, is, not, is not authentic, is not genuine. I think that what we must do, like uh, my brother noted there, and like I said before, is to re-address rethink, remodel, rework, if you like, restructure this enterprise. You know why I'm using those synonyms? Because as it were, we live in a country where people hide behind one finger, where people play the ostrich and refuse to call a spade by its name. 
The word restructuring was first used in the English dictionary in 1942, and it means to rework, to reshape, to remodel. And that's where we are until we understand that at some point this country worked. And when we had regional governments, we had, elect uh, we had electricity, almost a 24-hour supply in the southeast. We had television before the state of France and any other country in Africa. Uh, and that was in, in the western region, in Ibadan. We had cocoa, we had sesame, we had granite pyramids, we had, we had monstrous wealth until the pseudo-federalism that we today practice came at the dawn of the 1966 Porch, when eventually uh, Iran came with Decree 34, and every effort to restore Nigeria to true federalism has failed since then. And that's what we have as fundamentally the problem with this enterprise. You cannot encourage mediocrity and expect Nigeria to grow. Across lines, this country has become a rent-seeking and a rent-taking country. Where are the granite pyramids? We don't find them anymore. Where's the wealth from palm produce? They're not there anymore. Where are the cocoa silos? At some point in, this, in, in our historicity, we're one of the largest exporters of cocoa. Where are the cocoa silos? Where is the wealth from sesame? Where is the African timber and plywood come? We've lost everything because rather than encourage industry and hard work, rather than remodel our constitution okay. such that creativity and ingenuity will be encouraged, okay. we live in a country that lives a lie, and we have become largely a mono-product economy because government and leadership is preponderantly lazy. And I think that those who are calling for the restructuring of this country, a la... Uh, the call of the country first movement, Allah, the call of my brother Shawumi there, General Akirinade Akira retired, Obadiah Melafia, Pandef and the likes. Okay. Those who are asking that this country remodels and restructure are those who truly care and okay. love Nigeria. Thank you, Prof. You cannot I, I'm, I'm sorry, my time is you really fast. You cannot create unity. You Prof. negotiate unity. Thank you so much for that insight. That might actually be your last take on the program. But let me quickly get show me. No thanks to the network. Uh, we lost him for some time. But let me get your final comment. And that question looks very, very popular. What would make Nigeria worth dying for, especially for the young people watching this program? Is that me? Yeah. What would make Nigeria worth yeah, what dying for? Nigeria? Yes, for the young people watching the program. Yes, what will make Nigeria is for us to reset. We need to go back to basic values. We have virtually destroyed this country. And that includes my generation. Whether I am an act, active participant or not, we need to go back to basic values and then renegotiate the basis of our unity, you know, as um, postulated by prop. And the moment we create a country which people perceive to be fair, the unity is negotiated, not imposed, then we'll be on the path to creating a new Nigeria for the Nigerian people. And when I talk about going back to basic values, I'm actually talking about the spiritual path as advocated by many of the country called Nigeria. Okay. But the first step starts with restructuring. Nobody okay. wants the country to collapse. But we must negotiate a fair system for the country. We are the youth as stakeholders in this country, Thank in you this so same much. economy. Thank we you. are the see the country as promoting their interests rather than destroying their interests. Interest. Today, we have failed the youth. Thank you so we much. We cannot even provide education. We have to rely on private sector, you know, to provide education for people. We cannot provide water. We cannot provide electricity. So we are sad. not even building houses. When you ask yourself, what else is the country doing for the, for, for the youth and the poor people? So until we build a stakeholder society, evolve a system through restructuring that could ensure that we are all stakeholders in this economy, we will not be able you know, to win the youth to embrace Nigeria. Okay. Thank Most you so much. Most of those people who are agitating, who are fighting today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Biodin, show me. I'm so sorry. I will have to end the conversation now. 
it's been quite enlightening, quite interesting. And let's not give hope. Let's not lose hope. Sorry. Let's not lose hope on yes. this entity called Nigeria. We must not lose hope. And uh, one day, one year, maybe on October 1st as this, maybe in a few years' time, the language will change from both of you, where you will be talking about the way forward and not restructuring. Thank you for your time once again. Hopefully. Thank you. The pleasure is completely Thank, thank you, Prof. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this issue. Please don't go anywhere. As Nigeria celebrates 60 years of nationhood, there is no better time to celebrate men and women whom, through their sweat, have earned us honor in the Committee of Nations. Time will not permit me to mention many of them whose selfless labors have contributed to our independence. Some have not lived to see the fulfillment of their hopes, but nevertheless, they are remembered here." End of quote. This was part of the speech delivered by Tafar Balewa on the 1st of October 1960 as the Prime Minister of the, the New Nigeria, the day Nigeria gained independence. Listening to the speech before this program, I asked myself, would the people who sacrificed lives to the nail to gain self-determination for Nigeria be proud of the Nigeria of today? Would they dance for joy and encourage more Nigerians to make more sacrifices for their nation? Looking at the level of insecurity, corruption, poverty, nepotism, tribalism, inadequate infrastructure, hunger in the land, recession when the country is blessed with numerous natural resources, unemployment, prevalence of crime due to these, violence, crippling debt, calls for secession, and several other negative vibes. Sad enough, it appears we have not learned enough lessons from the civil war, which lasted for 30 months, more than 50 years. As we hear the drums of marginalization, secession, self-determination, and some rhetorics which further divide us. However, in spite of these, we have survived many near crises that almost confirm the doomed prophecy of disintegration. As we reflect on these common values and shared dreams, it is imperative to listen to one another, give one another a sense of belonging and oneness. Only then, we shall proudly say, here, is our dream country. And that's all we can take on Plus Politics today. Plus Politics returns tomorrow for a special edition on October 1st. And um, I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now.